My very first job was as an infantry second lieutenant on active duty. Um, and at that experience, it was fascinating to see how important the actual role of the American military was. My first duty station was Korea um, in the, in the mid-80s. And my fifth day on, on station, I was lying on an ambush in the DMZ in the snow. And at that point in time, it became crystal clear how important the role of the American warfighter was, not just for here in this country and for national defense, but also for power projection and to understand how America relates to the rest of the world. First of all, I'm very thankful. I mean, I've had a great support group all the way around me. Um, my family, my friends, uh, my religious beliefs have all contributed significantly to who I am right now and hopefully who I'll become in the future. Um, but remembering that first question about my first duty station and my first job, and I was, again, fortunately starting off as an infantry officer, I learned the art and craft of war fighting and, and learning it very, learned it very directly. And that makes a big difference. Um, as a, a senior executive inside the Defense Department, I've been able to use that experience and I always remember those early lessons on and I think about them almost daily on how do we make sure that DISA and the rest of, the, of our mission partners are able to support the American warfighter. And as I've done it, I've also recognized that there's about three major attributes I wanted to bring to the table. And, um, and I, I characterize them as the, my three R's. It's uh, responsibility, risk, and resourcefulness. And for anyone who's joining the federal government, I really would um, say that you need to look at um, your, maybe your career in those ways. You look at that responsibility and the ability for you to accept responsibility with integrity for all of your actions. Um, we also have to recognize that risk happens in your every piece of your career. And just accept the fact that you, so long as you know it, acknowledge it, and explain what the risk factors are around you, you can get through almost anything. And then in this time of, obviously, and in budget reductions, uh, the, how, are we, how, are we, how are we going to be able to be resourceful? How are you, as a young civil servant, going to be able to look at these things with an eye to curiosity, with an eye to innovation, and bring new resources to the table? Take a deep breath. Seriously, take a deep breath. Because quite frankly, your senior leaders and your managers don't expect you to know everything all of the time from the very beginning. Um, we expect you to be in that learning curve to understand how we do things and how we should be doing things and to bring those things to us. So just take a deep breath. Um, I wrote a book a few years ago on organizational dynamics and um, the phrase I used in there was a thing called PLUS. Pause, listen, understand, and then speak. So that you're able to go there and clearly articulate um, what the issues are. Because if you're always moving, you don't get a chance to stop and think. And quite frankly, we, we hired you to think. I've received two um, incredibly important pieces of, the, of advice in my career. Um, the first one was from my father, and my father had been enlisted in both the Army and the Navy for a number of years. And his, first, his advice to me as I was going out to my first duty station was to listen and to trust my team. Um, that he said that you could learn an awful lot every single day by just listening to them and trusting them, because they, we all have each other's best interests at heart. And if you accept that and you, as, as one of the premises of your life, you're going to be able to go there and be very successful. The other piece was that you needed to be fully engaged at all times. Um, you'll see people who will sort of move along and, um, a little bit slower and not necessarily become fully occupied in what they're doing on a, on a daily basis. Um, and I think that's probably just a bad career track. Um, your engagement and your personal involvement, and, and that's both um, by just your actions and your words and, and your thoughts, um, all really do matter. Um, and every single instance, um, the American taxpayer and our constituents are looking to us to be able to be fully engaged on trying to solve their problems. It's very simple. There are resources all around you and you'll find them in the most unlikely of spaces. 
You'll find them um, with your peer groups. You'll find them with your academic groups. You'll find them with your professional organizations. So just look for them and you'll find them again in the most novel of locations. I, I can walk around on a daily basis and find something new to learn about my organization and I just have to f stop and be able to think about why it really matters because there's some reason why someone is doing something so you just have to s understand that and then at times maybe help them recraft it to move them in the same direction as the rest of the organization. Once you become a federal civil servant I mean you are probably one of the most fortunate people in the world. Um, the, the, the federal government is driving so many pieces of innovation, much of it outside the scope of the media, and that you're able to go there and explore all sorts of pathways inside the technology space, um, and as well as other aspects of just service delivery. And, and recognize that being a civil servant means that you're focused on service to the greater constituency. It's not just your office, your organization, but it's really the, the American taxpayers at a, as a whole. Um, you look across the, the, the entire gamut. You look at things like where we're driving innovation in cloud computing, where we're driving innovation in large data, where we're driving innovation in cybersecurity profiling. But then you also look at the things that the NOAA is doing for the, the meteorological world. You're looking at things that the American Park Service is doing for just protecting our natural resources. And you're, you're, you realize that you're, to be in a, a civil servant is a very fortunate and lucky position. And my advice to you all is that you've got three, three letters you can use, and I, I would use them A, B, and C, and that's, you can really be adventurous in your career. You can find all sorts of things, and you can move all over the world if you choose. You can be bold. Um, there are all sorts of opportunities out there, and they're not normally in the traditional path. And then at the last piece, the, the C of it all, is you can be really curious. You can find all sorts of nuances that you can explore. I have fr senior friends who are scientists. I have friends at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, friends inside of NASA, and they are truly doing rocket science work. I, I think we've just seen some of the results with the Mars Exploratory. Um, and those are American civil servants and their daily activities.